for business owners especially, an estate plan isn't just a will. The next one is all about leaving your legacy. So um, just moving through this one pretty quick, um, about 60% of Australians die without a will, uh, which is huge. Um, if, you, if you do have a will, just put your thumbs up, either the uh, emoticon thingy, the reaction. Okay, so down or half a will. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I've got, we've got a will. Okay, cool. So about half, half of us do. So we're, we're bucking this trend. That's good. Um, but um, in terms of the, an estate plan, I guess um, for business owners especially, an estate plan isn't just a will. I go up here. Um, when you've got structures like um, trusts, companies, self-managed super funds, there's much more to consider um, when you're looking to pass on your wealth. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to this in a sec, but in terms of the different things, the different sets of documentation you need is if you have hold assets in your personal name, your will covers that. The will is the only document that covers stuff in your own name. Um, so if you, if you follow our principles on asset protection, where the risk taker has zero dollars in their name, then that is usually the most useless piece of paper when you're the risk taker, um, is, is actually your will. Um, but often people might think that's the only document they need, which is incorrect. Um, now, other ones to consider, so if you own assets in joint names, uh, not recommended, but sometimes clients will have their own home in you know, both names as joint tenants. Um, there's no document required, but whoever dies first leaves it to the survivor. That's the rule of survivorship with joint tenants. Um, so the will won't cover that. Uh, if you have assets in a company, uh, then you need to look at who the shareholders are because the shareholders uh, really control or own that company. Um, now a shareholder will either be a person, like an individual, or the shareholder will be a trust. Usually a trust if you're working with us. Um, and so if we have a look at trusts, we need to have a look at who is in the trust deed and the role we want to have a look at is who is the appointor or it's sometimes called the principal of the trust. So have a look at who that is. Now that's usually the asset person if we've set it up. And then you need to have a look at who is the successor to these roles. Or, or it'll be one or the other referred to in your deed. But who succeeds the appointor if the initial appointor passes away or loses the ability to make decisions. Um, normally it will be the executor of that person's will will usually control that trust after that point. So you need to be very careful uh, who the executor of your wills are. Normally, when you've got a husband and wife, it will be each other. So your, your spouse will be your executor in the first instance, uh, and they will control the assets of the trust. But if you've got, like let's say, awful thing to happen, but let's say you both pass away and you've got ch uh, children who are under 18, um, then that next layer of executor you need to have a look at to make sure it's appropriate, especially if you've got businesses owned through trusts or investment properties owned through trusts and you're giving the control to someone else who's not in your family um, to, to control for the purpose of benefiting your kids. So just watch out for, for that one. And then with superannuation, uh, we need to have a look at who you're, who you're, who you've nominated to receive your benefits on death. Um, so normally we would call this BDBN or binding death benefit nomination. <clears throat> so these cannot be contested. So if you've got an estate where you think you might, you know, your children might have a brawl, uh, these superannuation nominations skip your estate and go straight to the person listed. Uh, so that's almost like a defensive move um, but often we actually say in these nominations 
um, and, and depending on a tax perspective, it might be better for the, the super to pay out to the person's estate and be dealt with under the will. Depends on the family though. Um, yeah, if it's, if it's not a great situation, then we might want to go a bit more defensive on that one. And then insurance payouts. So we just spoke about life insurance. We need to have a look at who the policy owner is. So often life insurance policies will be owned by super. So if that's the case, we have a look at the super nomination. And then the super nomination might go to the estate. That's an example of something that might happen. Um, sometimes insurance policies are owned by the person who might die as well. So that will go straight to the estate. Depends on, on that ownership. So estate planning isn't, you know, just filling out a will. You know, husband or wife gets all my crap uh, and then give it to the kids. It's not as easy as that. Um, there's, there's a few different layers to, to consider there. 